Hey everybody, it's George from DinosaurGeorge.com. If you've got a question you want to ask about paleontology, it doesn't have to strictly be about dinosaurs, um, go to my website, DinosaurGeorge.com, and click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, fill out the form and submit it. We receive thousands of questions a week, and it's just not possible anymore to be able to answer them all. So if uh, you submit a question over and over again and it doesn't get answered, have patience and try. It's sort of like winning the lottery. Or maybe with my answers, maybe it's more like losing the lottery. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Evan from Noblesville, Indiana. Hi, George. Hope you're doing well. I am, Evan. I hope you are too, my friend. Lately, I've been trying to study animals through the dinosaur periods that weren't really dinosaurs. My question is, were there any prehistoric snakes? And if so, how big was the biggest and what did they prey upon? If they weren't around during any of the dinosaur periods, then when exactly did snakes start evolving to become what we see today? Hope this one isn't too hard. It's just got me pretty stumped. <laughs> Evan, that, that's a good question. First of all, let me tell you this. Here's the problem with snakes. Hardly, there's hardly any really big bones in a snake, and so it's very unlikely to be preserved. And second of all, if it is preserved, man, it's almost impossible to find snakes because they're so small. Even the big snakes have relatively small bones in comparison to bigger things like some of the big mammals and some of the big reptiles and, of course, the dinosaurs. But, yes, uh, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me while I cough to death. Um, yeah, they have found fossilized snakes in the late Cretaceous, and if I understood correctly, it was some kind of big constrictor. It doesn't appear like the venomous snakes show up till much later on. It looks like the first snakes are constrictors. And it's a pretty big one. I don't remember the name of it. Can't even, can't even come close to it. But uh, it's a big, it's a big boa. It, it's a big boa-like dinosaur, or maybe anaconda is maybe closer to it. I can't recall. But anyway, I know it's a constrictor and I know it was big. And so because of its size, it certainly could have preyed on small dinosaurs. It could have preyed pretty much on anything. Uh, it's like modern day constrictors. They can take prey much larger than themselves. And my guess would be they are dinosaur eaters. All right. Ryan from Polo, Illinois. Hey, DG, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Ryan. I hope this message gets to you. Well, it did, Ryan. Congratulations. I was wondering if Triceratops prorus, <coughs> excuse me, Man, I'm telling you guys, I don't know what's in the air today. Uh, I wonder if Triceratops prorus could have been like a hippo in terms of its lifestyle. I think this because its eyes are higher up on its head than its relative Triceratops horridus. Ryan, that's a pretty interesting way to look at things. That's, that's really cool. You know, if we only looked at the skeleton of a hippopotamus and we didn't have a modern hippo to look at, I guarantee you that everybody looking at that skeleton would assume that that animal lived a lifestyle like a rhinoceros. They, we would have assumed it simply came to the water to drink. Nowhere in the skeleton, in my opinion, is there any evidence that would suggest that these animals are aquatic. You look at the skeleton of it and you may, like all people would assume, it's a land animal. So is it possible that some of the species of Triceratops may have lived a life like that? Yes, it's possible, but here's the thing that I think would probably make it unlikely, and that is the frill. Imagine trying to move your body underwater with this gigantic frill. It would, it would literally stop you in your tracks. You wouldn't be able to push against the water because your frill would be so giant. It's not designed to be uh, aerodynamic. And so therefore, Ryan, my best guess would be that it probably didn't. But does that mean that uh, they're, they're, uh, it's, it's not possible? Well, of course not. Of course it's possible. Uh, but I do like the fact that looking at the placements of the eye gives you a different point of view. I like that, and that's really cool. All right, Stephen from Wellington, New Zealand. Hi, Dinosaur George. Hope you are well. I am Stephen. I hope you and your family are well as well. He says, what are your top five favorite dinosaurs? Yikes. Top five favorites. Allosaurus number one, Utah Raptor number two, Deinonychus number three, Tyrannosaurus rex number four, and number five, yikes, who would number five be? Man, I really like Gastonia. I really like Ceratosaurus. I like Brachiosaurus. Holy smokes, man. I've never counted back that far of who's my favorite. I don't know. That, that would be kind of a tough one to, to answer. There's so many really big sauropods. Maybe Gastonia. Simply, I'll tell you why I like Gastonia so much. I think he's cool. But I also think Robert Gaston, the guy that find, found him, Robert Gaston is an incredibly nice guy. I like Robert a lot. So I'm simply going to choose Gastonia because of my friendship with Robert Gaston. How's that for a scientific answer? 
All right, Thomas from Houston, Texas, right down the road from me. Hey, Thomas, your Houston Texans are doing really well football-wise. I'm pretty proud. Uh, he says, hi, Dinosaur George. You may not have ever heard this question before, but could a ceratosaurus kill an Amphicelius? Hey, that's kind of cool. Um, I uh, answered an Amphicelius question earlier, uh, so that's kind of cool. Thanks for answering my question, if you can. Well, Thomas, yes, uh, first of all, you're welcome, and thank you for taking the time to write to me. Ceratosaurus probably was not capable of killing things much bigger than itself. Now, I say that only because he's such a lightly built dinosaur. He doesn't really, to me, appear to be a dinosaur that's really designed to take on big game. Now, certainly if it was hunting in a pack, it would have the capabilities of doing it, but you really look at him and he's really, he's just not built, built very strong. Amphicelius is, of course, a gigantic, gigantic sauropod, and Ceratosaurus just couldn't possibly take on something that big. Maybe a baby? Yeah, certainly, certainly he could take on babies. Um, in fact, uh, maybe um, a dinosaur like Ceratosaurus would be ideally suited for sneaking in and grabbing young dinosaurs. That's, that's actually probably something he was capable of doing. All right, finally, Dustin from Buda, Texas. Another Texas in Buda is right down the road from me. Hey, DG, hope you're doing well, and I'm very happy you like my letter. Well, thank you, Dustin, and your letter was very nice, and, and uh, uh, I think that, uh, I mean, I appreciate you taking the time to write to me. I was wondering about your opinion of Epanterius. Hope you have a good day. Well, thank you, Dustin. I, I hope you and your family have a good day as well. Epanterius is a mystery dinosaur. Uh, not a lot was discovered of him. He was found in New Mexico. He's a Jurassic predator. Some people feel he's just an oversized Allosaurus. Some people feel he is Allosaurus, just a monster. Um, and uh, others feel that he's his own species. Whatever Epanterius is, based on what was found, and again, very little was found, this is a big predator. Uh, there are a number of paleontologists who believe that uh, Epanterius may have been even larger than Tyrannosaurus rex. And you know, I hear that a lot. Uh, Sorphaganax and Epanterius, people believing that they may represent bigger dinosaurs than Tyrannosaurus. In my opinion, it wouldn't surprise me if Epanterius and Sorphaganax, and one other thing, a lot of people believe those are the same dinosaurs. It wouldn't surprise me if Epanterius was bigger than Tyrannosaurus rex. It would make sense to me because the sauropods during the Jurassic are the biggest dinosaurs that ever lived. It would make sense then that the predatory dinosaurs would have been bigger during that time. When you get into the Cretaceous, dinosaurs are so, sort of scaled back in size. We don't see as many as the absolute titans. And predatory dinosaurs sort of follow the curve. Um, Plants kind of start the process. Dinosaurs have to evolve to be able to get to the plants. And when the trees are growing taller, dinosaurs are growing taller. And finally, the predators have to kind of follow suit with the plant eaters. And therefore, the predators should have been taller at the time that the plant eaters were tallest. So I wouldn't be surprised. Whatever the case about Epanterius, he's a cool dinosaur simply because he's an allosaurid, in my opinion. All right, you guys, thank you so much for writing to me. Uh, everybody out there, take care of yourself and take care of all the people around you. And when I say take care of them, I don't necessarily mean go to their house and clean their house for them. What I mean by that is uh, if you see somebody on the street who dropped something, stop and help them pick it up. Open a door for somebody. Uh, let somebody through the door before you. That's what I mean. It makes the world such a better place and uh, makes you feel a lot better about yourself. For all you young people out there, practice your reading, and I will see you all again soon. Take care, everybody.